So hello and welcome to a new uh, tutorial uh, in uh, Kotlin programming. This will be our last one in Kotlin, uh, in program in uh, IntelliJ. The following, the following one will be in Android Studio. And it's the last thing we have to see really. After we've seen the lists um, and the way we can order uh, elements, we will create our first objects, okay? classes and objects. The classes, what they represent templates. Uh, we will see the example here, but the idea is that classes allow us to create a, a template in which, on which to create different objects. The best example is human example. We will create a Kotlin file class, but in this case, it's gonna be a class called human. Okay, great. Human, yeah, we know that humans have specific attributes that are shared by everyone. For example, var uh, i i numbers, which equals to two in, in general. Var i ear numbers equals to two as well. Var i mouth number equals to one. Those are attributes that are shared by everyone. Okay. Um, I don't know, we can also add var, we're gonna put s hair corner of type string, okay? It's gonna be empty for now because we don't hold the color of the, but everybody has hair, but we don't know the co hair color, okay? Var s name, we all have names. It's probably the same thing we all share, a name. It can be a, a, a complex name, a small name, it doesn't matter, we all have names. Var, uh, I colors, okay, I color, straight, okay, so you can see there are two kinds of attributes, the ones we predefine and the ones we have no definition, okay, so humans, the class human will be, we what we will do once we have a class human is create many humans, okay, and to do that I'm going to create a new file main, okay, main three, let's call it. And in there, okay, I will define the font main. And this font main will, we will create here a number of humans, okay. We will call human Yoni of type human, okay. Equals to human empty. So I created my first human called Yoni. Okay, I'm going to create another human, var Kelly, of type human, or equals to human. So as you can see, I have two different variables with of the same type. Right now they're equal, really, in their attributes. They both have two ears, two eyes, one mouth. They both don't have the var the va these values defined the care the hair color the name or the eye color they are empty right now. Okay, if I go to the main and I put a print, ln, and I print Yoni's eyes number will be equal to Yoni dot I number. If we want to access an attribute of an object of the of the class, we just put the name of the variable dot the i dot, and we will access the attributes of the class. Now I can already tell you that when you initialize a class, this process here by doing this empty parentheses, we are saying that we want to create an object of this class. The classes only represent the template. But when we use the template to create a variable or create a new human, we are initializing it, it becomes an object. And that's the difference between, the, between a class and an object. A class is unique. There's only one class, class human, which contains all the attributes of the human with functions that will all humans share. But the objects can be many. Object Yoni, Object Kelly, Object 
Danny. Okay, in this it doesn't matter. Each of them will have, will be all of them humans, but they're objects. This is an object, this is an object, this is an object. And the moment you do this parenthesis, you are initializing it. Without doing the parenthesis, you cannot initialize it. So if you don't do that, the object does not exist. Okay, right now we have three objects. Johnny's i number is whatever there is here. If I execute it, it should have two, two i numbers. Okay, now if I print the same thing with Kelly and Danny, what will happen is that the color, the, 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 the eyes will be the same. The, the three of them, sorry, I have to change here. The three of them, they share exactly the same values that by default, the human class, the human class has, okay? And they all have empty hair, empty name, and empty eye corners. They don't have values here. If I decide to print them, and I say, okay, now let's print the hair color. Let's do it. Let's copy this and just put it down it here. Then Johnny's hair color equals to, in this case, not I number. If we put dot, it will show us at the first section of the suggestions, it will show us all the attributes, all the variables with the V that are available to us. And we want to print the hair color, not the eye color, not the name, not the mouth, the hair color. If I do the same with, I can copy and paste and do the same here. Copy and paste, do the same here. Copy and paste, do the same here. If I execute this right now, it will show me empty. You see, it's empty. There is nothing. You have you, because I haven't defined anything. And you will tell to me, well, well, if I want, if you want to define it, just go to the human and put a color, for example. By the way, when you see that it, it stopped being gray, it means that it's telling you it's being used somewhere. It's very useful because then you know that's being used. Right now, these two are not used. This one is used. So if I put here a color, you know, for example, brown, then you say, okay, just put it there and that's it. But what is the problem? The problem is that if I do that, all of them will have the same value. And that's a problem. You cannot do that. I mean, because Kelly and Danny may not have the same color. In that case, you're not allowing to dif differentiate and make something different between the objects. How do we fix that? The key is not the setting here, the value, because what you put here is only the values that you know that by default humans tend to have. You can even change it later, okay? But for by default, you tend to know that the number of eyes are two, the number of ears are two, and the number of mouths are one. That's by default. Humans tend to have that, okay? There's always exceptions, but humans tend to have that. But the hair color can really change. The hair color of each person can be different. So to make that, to, to, to set the different colors, what we do is the following. You can come here and do this. Johnny dot s hair color here, this one here, equals to brown. You do the same thing with the other two, Kelly and Danny. This is Kelly forever blonde. And this one is white. Okay, so if you do this, what will happen is that you have different colors, you see? Because I predefined it here. That's how you can differentiate. Eye numbers are the same, but the hair color is different. And that's one of the advantages we have. We didn't have to really to set here the value. The value keeps being empty in the template because it's a template, it's the default. But later on, during the execution of the application, I define different values depending on my needs. I need that Kelly's hair color will be blonde. I need that Danny's hair color will be white. So I define it. And Yon is, is brown. So I put it like that. That's the difference between an object, because we are working now here, when we do this, we're working with objects. The, the attribute of the object Yoni hair color will be brown. The attribute of the Hair color of uh, the hair color of, Ke of the object Kelly will be blonde, and the uh, hair color of Danny will be white. Okay, so that's 
that's the difference between a class. A class only is unique, is one only, and you can and the values you put there will be the original values. And later on, yeah, you can uh, change the values from inside as uh, as much as you need. For example, if I want to change the value of the i number of Yoni, I can. By the way, I can because Yoni's i number is not final. Okay, we can set final values, but it's not really forced. You can put the i number to be three, okay? So if I do that, you only will have three i's, yeah? So the first time it will show two, okay? And then because I change it, now it's three, okay? That's how we work with attributes. Some elements to consider. If you want to force the value not to change, you have to put a, num a name, a word called final, okay? Final, Sorry, forget it, forget it. We will see it later on. Okay, just leave it like that. Ah, no, not final. If you want the value not to change, you just put it as a value, not a variable. Values are forced. They are uh, not uh, changeable. They cannot be changed. So if I define a value i number equals two, it will always stay two. And it will tell me here that there is an error. It will tell me that val cannot be reassigned. You cannot change the variable, the, the val, the value of a val of a value. Okay. If I go, if I press on control in Windows, you press control. In Linux, you press option, uh, you press command, and you you will be able to jump to the position where the where the var variable is defined. If I press with a button with the mouse on it, it will take me here, and it will show me that it's a val. It's not a var. Okay, if I want to fix it again, I put back var, and now it's modif You can change it. Okay, that's another element you have to consider from the moment you would define and create your own classes. When you create a class, you may you may be interested in creating in human values that cannot be changed. You can force it to be like that, so humans will always have these values. And when someone uses your object or you use your own object in some other place you are forcing them not to be able to change those values, right? That's another thing to consider. And that's it. The following part, we'll see how to create functions, yeah? And the third part, we will see how to make the, uh, how to inheritance between classes, okay?